Fox News alert. We are awaiting the start of the daily press briefing at the White House right now. The administration facing a firestorm of questions over what President Obama said about the U.S. Supreme Court when it comes to its decision over his health care law. Now, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit, that's down in Texas, is weighing in on the matter, demanding that the Department of Justice, which is arguing before the Fifth Circuit in another case challenging the health care law, opine on the authority of the federal courts to review the federal laws. He wants to know, these judges do, do we have this right in the Department of Justice's view or do we not? Here in part is what President Obama said that started this whole controversy on Monday. For years what we've heard is the biggest problem on the bench was judicial activism or a lack of judicial restraint. That uh, an unelected uh, group of, of people would somehow overturn uh, uh, a duly constituted and, and passed uh, law. Uh, well, there's a, a good example, uh, and I'm pretty confident that this, uh, this court will recognize that uh, and not take that step. Joining us now by phone, radio talk show host and constitutional attorney Mark Levin. He's author of Ameritopia. The Unmaking of America, not to mention the best-selling Men in Black, which is about the Supreme Court. Mark, thank you so much for being here with us. My great pleasure. Thank you. All right. So the, the president came out yesterday, tried to soften his remarks a little, uh, but stood by the basic notion that it would be extreme for the Supreme Court to strike down his health care law. I want to start with the unusualness of the President of the United States commenting on pending litiga litigation in the way that he has, uh, both on Monday and on Tuesday, and your thoughts on why he's doing that. Well, you're exactly right. He's commenting on a case where he knows full well the justices are currently in the process of uh, giving their own opinions to each other in their cloistered environment. They heard the President's lawyers in court. Uh, and the president's making um, comments after the fact, there is no decision. You know, it's one thing for a president to criticize the court and its decision as activists and so forth. Once he's read their decision, he has there's no decision to read. And so what he's trying to do is influence and intimidate because none of the points he made yesterday or, or the day before were even legal points. They were not even constitutional points. They were absurd points, mostly... Uh, aimed at uh, riling people, getting people upset. We have unelected judges. Gee, that's been going on for a long time. We've had unelected judges since what? The adoption of the Constitution? Did he just recognize that? We have unelected judges who do things the president loves every day. He's appointed many unelected judges, so he knows better than anybody that many of them are unelected. That said, this notion of judicial activism, when a court upholds the Constitution, which is the job of a judge or a justice, that's not judicial activism. When they rewrite the Constitution or go outside the Constitution and undertake to uh, activities of that sort, that is judicial activism. But what this president is trying to do is get to these court members, particularly Kennedy, and let him know, look, I'm going to unleash a war on you guys. If you don't rule the way that I like, you, this is just a taste of what you're going to get. That's why... Judge Jerry Smith, and I bet other judges around the country said, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Uh, that case hasn't even been decided yet. There is no opinion. And we have a president of the United States that's using political rhetoric attacking justices. That's, and Jerry Smith, of course, of the Fifth Circuit that we were discussing. I, let, let's talk about the Supreme Court because, you know, the, the high court is one of the few, the, the last remaining body uh, of government that still has a decent approval rating. The latest Rasmussen Reports poll earlier this month, or, or earlier last month, I should say, shows that 72% of those polled at least have a fair uh, view of the court or believe that their decisions are fair, good, or excellent. 72%, a lot better than the president and Congress. Is there risk uh, in having the president of the United States criticize these nine justices in the way that he did on Monday? Well, what he's hoping to do, I guess, is knock down their poll numbers. Everything Obama does is political, and what's interesting is what's supposed to go on in that courtroom is not political, constitutional, legal, and precedential. And so I guess he wants to politicize that, drag them down a few notches, 10, 20, 30 points, and then talk about how these justices are denying uh, the American people their health care. What these justices are trying to do is determine what is or is not constitutional. Nothing more, nothing less. But if Obama was concerned about unelected uh, judges, 
he should be concerned about unelected EPA administrators and unelected cabinet secretaries because they're out there issuing all kinds of regulations. Or even he talks about this uh, duly elected Congress. Several members of the Senate, that 60 Democrat supermajority that voted for this, were not elected. They were appointed, as a matter of fact. Uh, so even that doesn't make any sense. And judicial review, I mean, you know, in judicial review, honestly, is an implied power. It's not specifically in the Constitution, but it is settled law in this country going back almost to the beginning. So judges and justices need to be very careful about how they apply it. And the primary thing they're supposed to do is make sure they do their very best to determine the original intent of the framers, what the language means, if they have to look behind it, they look behind it, but they're not trying to uh, rejigger it. They're not trying to uh, social engineer. And so that's what we mean by judicial review. And yeah. because this individual mandate has absolutely no precedent, absolutely no constitutional history behind it, Obama's saying, this is what I want, and I'm warning you before you write your opinion, you know, that, that you, you folks need to understand that, you know, and, and that is really exceptional. That's could, really extraordinary. Could it have any effect? You say maybe it was aimed at Justice Kennedy, the swing vote. Do you think it could have any effect on him? Well, you know, it ought to have the opposite effect on him. This is an attack on the sanctity of a branch of government. You know, it's one thing when Obama relentlessly attacks Congress when he's running as Truman. Now he's also trying to run as FDR, and I think he's going to relentlessly attack the Supreme Court. He's in full attack political mode. And it's up to judges and justices like Jerry Smith on the Fifth Circuit and Kennedy and the others on the Supreme Court to say, you know what, we're not going to stand for this. We're going to do what we think is right, regardless of what a temporary president has to say. And, Megan, I'm going to tell you something. What's upsetting this president is that the dirty work of the prior Congress, which was thrown out by the American people, now we have a new Congress, uh, he wants that dirty work to stand. And if this Supreme Court strikes down the individual mandate or the entire Obamacare bill, it goes to a different Congress, doesn't it? It goes to one where the House is controlled by the Republicans. So he is desperate to save this law or as much of it as he possibly can, and he's going to continue, I think, to politically attack the Supreme Court. Yeah, Mark Levin points out that he's a temporary president. Of course, our federal judges have lifetime appointments, so there is a real distinction between the length of service uh, in those you know, two groups. Mark, thank you so much for being here. God bless. Thanks very much. You take care. All right, you too. See you soon.